What's up again, everybody? It's that time again. Let's spin the dial and see what deck we get. Are you ready? Three, two, one, stop. Deck number 25. We're going to play deck number 25, and that is... Corbin... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Corbin Vault Seer. I've... This deck is a bad one. I remember that. It won't click. Oh, I've got to go find it. Pause. Okay, this is an Age of Ascension deck, and it is <laughs> it is not a good one. Except it does have Proclamation 346E, which is pretty cool. But this is going to be a tough one. Okay, this is not synergized. Let's just put it that way. But we're going to see if we can sneak in a win with this deck. Okay, here we go. All right, the real question is, how do we maximize our value here with this deck? Man. Um, it's going to be a little tricky here. We do have a Nightforge look. How fun. Can we set anything up here? I mean, this is a good hand to keep. We're going second, so this is like a keep and then play these three, which is kind of cool. Plays with Brain Eater. All right. Hmm. Okay, well, we're still playing it, and we're just kind of hoping. But there's not a lot of of good stuff that, you know, goes alongside this. So we play this, okay. Our Untamed Ambassador is down. It's down, but he can easily just name more Logos and then just eat this and draw a card. It's unfortunate that uh, we didn't get some sort of another buff. This is technically a three. We could have given that the taunt, but it is what it is. Healing Blast, but uh, we've only got one untamed creature, so we're not incentivized to play this. And we have all of this in our uh, Shadow's turn. So yeah, he's going to... Ooh, a Mulbius Scroll. That's cool. Brain Eater obviously kills the uh, Lion Botrim, so he draws a card, plays a Ganymede Archivist, passes on over. These are three cards that are in Call of the Archons, so I'm assuming his deck is Call of the Archons. Technically, if this were um, Archon format, we could we could take a look, but I don't care that much. Let's see, this already has Elusive. These all will have Elusive, so it doesn't really matter where this goes. Deploy to the right of that. Um, I'm not keeping Nightforge around. Not keeping it around. Oh, this is good, though. equalize this would be a really cool card if it were in a set like worlds collide where it makes a lot more sense right i guess it's good against worlds collide decks or it's it's decent against worlds collide decks we can technically play this and heal the brain eater so it looks like we're going to do that next turn oh no is he going to just trade this off that would be depressing He's going to reap, and then he's going to reap archive a card. Use Mobius Scroll to archive two more, I would guess. And I'm assuming here he's archiving cards that he's not going to be playing this turn. Yeah, he's going to archive the Mobius Scroll plus two more cards. He's got three cards left in hand. Does nothing. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're definitely going to just jam down this stuff on Sanctum. We can't. Oh, we could play technically. Yeah. Dude, this is a sweet turn. Sanctum. We're going to play Healing Blast. We're going to heal this for four or more, gaining three amber from playing that single card. Play Proclamation, making his keys cost two more. Uh, go to six by playing Equalize. We're going to Reap, allowing us to play Persistence Hunting and name Logos to, to exhaust all the Logos cards. That was a bomb turn from a bad deck. <laughs> that was awesome. That was pretty cool. Okay, we're at eight. He is playing a Shadows deck, and this is Call of the Archons, so we know it's like just overtuned like crazy. He's got four cards in Archive and six cards in hand. We can kind of assume this is not going to last, and he does indeed <laughs> immediately name Shadows. Oh, but it was cool while it lasted, right, everybody? Miasma. Okay, so he's preventing me from forging a key during my step. And then he's playing Subtle Maul. 
Um, what, like too much to protect, maybe? I don't know. What is he gonna do? Okay, so this is an interesting turn as well. We could play four things onto the board in the form of this. Uh, if we just keep going up Amber and he has, should we look? Let's look, let's just look. He's got two Miasmas, three Nerf Blasts, and a too much to protect, of course. Yeah, that's insane. So three Nerf Blasts, that steals three, too much to protect, that steals uh, all but six. So three here and then Nerf Blast, Nerf Blast. So we should like play down uh, a board full of other stuff. Yeah, we should just fill the board with other stuff. So play this, play this, play this. Do we play the Song of Spring? It gives us another Amber, it gives him four. He goes to seven, steals again, steals again. Uh, I don't think we do. We want him to be at a total where if we play Swindle, he does not forge. <sighs> That's dangerous. Steals three, goes to six, has two nerf blasts, goes to eight, seven, six, five. Let's play it and just get the amber, and then... Do we want to shuffle any of these? No. Okay. So we can assume he's going to either take the archives or he just has it in hand. He's going to play like the, the too much... Yeah, he takes the archives, has too much to protect, I would imagine. I, I'm hinging everything off of that he doesn't have all three nerf blasts. Plays too much to protect, steals three. Goes to seven. Oh, I miscounted. If he has two nerve blasts now, it doesn't work. And he does, I think. Steals one, deals two. Steals one, deals two. Yeah, I miscounted. I didn't need to take that ninth one. Yeah, so he'll forge. I can steal three back here. Plays the silent dagger, it's cool. So he's at 10, um, 987. Oh, he had all three. Did he have all three? Oh, no, no, no. Silent Dagger gave him one. Okay. Okay, so we can play this, and then we set ourselves up, and he doesn't necessarily have a way to doing that. It's, it sucks that Swindle is both Alpha and Omega. Hmm. It's kind of a bummer. His keys do cost 10, or sorry, 8. So technically... Technically, this does keep him from forging. Play his turn. So he's at seven, but he doesn't forge, and I'm at seven, and I do forge unless he plays more Shadows stuff. Uh, how many cards did he play? He played three cards last turn. He did not use Subtle Maul. What did he discard from me? Oh, the Knuckles Bolton, right? Yeah. Okay, so he has three cards from hand. No, no. He had three cards that he played. So he didn't draw any cards. So his hand is where it was. Remote access and Mobius scroll. Remote access does nothing for the uh, proclamation. He's at eight now. We have any steel in hand. Or in the board. Ganymede to uh, archives at nine. And then we can imagine he'll go to uh, either draw a card or he'll just go to 10. Yeah, he'll kill and just go to 10. Or sorry, yeah, he's at 10. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> he reaped. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forged the red key. Okay, again, he has to forge at 8. We don't have any way of lowering that right now. And we have a 2-2-2, two, 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 which means we have two cards from each in our hand from each house. I should have put this down first when I played that stuff. Fight, reap. Do I keep, do I care about this stuff? Not really. Shadows, we want to play the Umbra down. And then we want to play the Lamendra um, next to the Umbra. 
so that this uh, reap effect can't deal it to there. Then we want to fight this into that, and then we want to reap that into there. He's going to forge his key, but he has to pay eight for it. I don't meet this requirement because I don't have another creature. Actually, you know what? I, I wonder if this works. Maybe it does. I can gain three if this is considered to be in House Sanctum. Oh, that's a cool little combo. So he's playing Mars now. He's got seven cards in hand. Yixlix Dominator, card you don't see very often anymore if you play a lot of new school Keyforge. Xelo Bolter is a cool card. Mind Warper. And then Tunk. That is a board full of Mars creatures. Huh. That's interesting. Wonder if we can position this well. This doesn't have taunt right now. This has taunt, so we can't actually hit that. This has elusive. That would run into there, and it would uh, three six nine. It wouldn't. It would kill that, and it would kill this one. I can't get over here to this guy. We're playing Sanctum because I want to see if this actually triggers. Let's see. Do we smite that first? We could actually do this way and steal an amber to do it too. Man, I wish we could fight there. So this is skirmish, fight steal there. The other option is just to kill the tongue with a Nox. So we're playing smite first. Uh, well, let's see, if I do that combo, I should, def I should definitely do this because it puts me to forge. Okay, then we're going to play this, fully heal um, the Tantadlin. Now this technically should, oh, was there a reap effect that we could have used? No. This should give me three amber. It does. <laughs> That's sweet. I love that. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to reap with that, go to seven. End. Oh look, a key charge. Destroy each scientist creature. So it destroys this mind warper. Dude, we are hitting like some seriously good rolls for this deck. <laughs> this is what it feels like to high roll, huh? That's kind of crazy. That's a crazy combo that we've just rolled into. Weird. Okay, so he's used two of the three nerve blasts, right? And he's used too much to protect and a miasma. So he would have to have another miasma and the other nerve blast. Uh, yeah. I didn't take a look at this other stuff. Technically, technically, this is also a bit of control. It's naming Logos, though, so he's going to do like stuff with this. Brain Eater can kill something. What would he kill with this Brain Eater? Twin Bolt Emission is a good one. I like this card. Oh, it's not loading. Bummer. Okay, Twin Bolt Emission to kill the Lamindra. Second Twin Bolt Emission to kill uh, Umbra and Knuckles Bolton. But I'm assuming he's letting me have the key. Which is interesting. It's going to Brain Eater to kill the Knuckles Bolton and Reap. So he goes to four. He controls two out of three houses. Plays Sloppy Lab work, so archives and discards. I mean, we're definitely just naming this stuff. Do we keep the key charge? Yeah, probably. We probably keep that. Does this, I could fight with this stuff to damage it up first. This can go into that. Okay, sloppy lab work. This can go into that. I can play this, gain two amber. I'll forge the yellow key. Okay, I'll name untamed. This fights. Yeah, 
Does it matter? It's the same thing as reaping. It would be exactly the same as reap reap, wouldn't it? Hmm. It's exactly the same. But we are going to play this. And it blows up a guy. We are going to play this. Does this so that would kill this? So I guess it's not exactly the same. It is good to kill the things that are on the board, right? So fight, fight. Oh shoot! No! Oh man! Okay, well, that was really dumb because I forgot this is taunted, and this looks like it has taunt because it has the upgrade on it. Dang it! Ah uh, well. Live and learn, right? Do we keep this key charge? Wait, what? Oh, no, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that was so bad. <sighs> All right. I should, no, I shouldn't look, whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, man, that's a that's a bad play. Okay, so this can do that next turn. This turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we keep this key charge. We totally like messed ourselves real bad. Okay, well, we're just gonna live with uh, our mistakes and just hit the end button. Ooh, Dusk Witch. Ooh, we could play this stuff. We are down to five, so we can shuffle in the things that we did. Okay, so if you if you weren't following up with what I, what I just terribly did, when I chose to attack, the, the way this UI works, the upgrade pushes this forward, making it look like it has taunt. So I chose to attack with a Tintadlin, thinking I could attack this Brain Eater, but I couldn't because it doesn't have taunt. This has taunt. Yixlix Dominator had taunt. So when the Tintadlin went in and fought the Yixlix Dominator, it died. It dying made the knocks on the end get one less... Um, neighbor giving it minus three power the only reason it was still alive is because it had that buff so it killed both of those things and in doing so i lost the uh darna effect which just absolutely stinks he still doesn't have three so proclamation's still doing work probably play this make him do stuff to it reap there i keep this alive uh, play. We will shuffle one, two, three back into our deck. Or do we want to even shuffle that stuff back into the deck? What's still on our deck? It's a bunch of stuff we don't really care about. It's a Choda. It's kind of interesting. <sighs> Is that stuff that good? And this one is, that one is. I don't care about the Tintadlin. We, uh, the, the Dusk Witch is never living. We can just kind of agree on that. But it makes him name something that kills it, so probably Mars again. He wants to name Mars. It's going to go crazy on the Amber. <sighs> okay. So. Yeah, we'll just put those back in the deck. Play. Oh, wait, we don't want to play that. We want to reap. And then we want to play this and end the turn, of course. Kicking things as I try to get more comfy. Ah. Five, six, that on board. So we can technically set ourselves to seven next turn. Uh, this will capture one, so we'll go to six more likely. Unless he chooses to reap to try and push past things. That'll deal the damage. He's at nine. Probably 11. Yep, 11. Now does he? 13. He just goes to 13. Okay. It's a close ending. Let's see if we can somehow pull it out. We'll do this. We'll play that. We'll play this on the marmo swarm we will reap and reap okay this is a big play we're going to play the protect the weak on the prince derek and end the turn all right 
he could just take us. Let's see. Hmm. If he has the Miasma, which we can assume he does, then he just plays that. Maybe he maybe he stays on that. Maybe he just Miasmas. If he plays the Miasma, then we got the Choda and the uh, Key Charge. Oh, wow. GG, sir. I could have sworn he had something. Wow. That is insane to get a win with that deck. Of course, we had an insane, like, opening. The opening was just bonkers. That... That uh, that is the best case scenario, but he uh, went ahead and GG'd. Good game. So just in case you were curious, this is why I was a bit down on the deck. Okay, the SAS is very poor. It's it's a fifty. Um, the deck obviously, and this is this is the nice thing about SAS is like it's a great little um, barometer for how good a deck could be, but it doesn't cover all the bases and it doesn't account for. Um, <laughs> high rolling for one and also just general player like proficiency I guess is the right way to put it and I don't call myself a proficient player by any means in comparison to a lot of people but we made choices that were um, impactful to the game and we made uh, <laughs> an error that almost I would say lost us the game because we could have had two more creatures on board and that would have made things a lot easier going you know into the end game uh, but the fact that this is a an, an SAS 50 is is definitely telling. I mean, you look through the deck, like that normally doesn't do any work, and it just gave us an amber at the beginning when we needed it. The fact that we were able to have two houses on board and then play a golden aura to give us the third house, and I guess it wouldn't have mattered, right? Now that I think about it, the Prince Derek Unifier, he counts himself, so... You know, we didn't even need it there. But the the point being is it literally hit the high roll on that uh, in that whole scenario, which was crazy, which was crazy. So that is Corbin Vaults here. That was the deck, what, four? That's deck four that we've played. So 100 left to go. Only 100 decks left. And we are two and two. And <laughs> both of the wins are with Age of Ascension decks. Oh, my God. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? All right, if you enjoyed these Keyforge videos and you want to see some more, hit the like and the subscribe and let me know in a comment below. I'll keep pumping them out if you keep wanting them. If you want to support the channel on Patreon or on the Discord, feel free to hop into the description. There's links for both of those. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.